But um, my remarks would be actually three points. And the first one would be the benefits of action. And the second one, why do we actually need business? And the third one is how should we move forward? What are the solutions out there? And the benefits of action is also based that we have a value. And we have uh, several studies that's now starting to look into the Baltic. And we have the Baltic Stern that show that the value of the Baltic Sea is valued to 7.5 billion euro, approximately. And then we have the Baltic Sea Action Plan and the cost to actually do all that effort that we had agreed upon in the HELCOM meeting, which is around three. That leaves us to four billion euro left. So that may be hesitations. You may have questions about that study. But it shows the value of the Baltic. Another study that was made that the World Life Foundation did with the Boston Consulting Group also showed that the Baltic have 500, 550,000 jobs and also the revenue of 32,000 value added billion euro. So it's a lot of money and it also, as we know, it creates a market and it creates investment and, and, and huge potential. And for example, just a fishery have 175 million a year and 16,000 jobs. And there was a study made by Rachel Shamid, and he showed since 2008 that has been a growing impact in fisheries, 1%. But in the tourism sector, it has been 38%. So while we're looking into the blue growth, which is another concept that I've mentioned, where should we actually put our money? Should we put it into the sectors that we're actually not using or protecting? Or should we look for the new opportunities and see how we can value added uh, in new sectors? And I think we all know the answer. Um, and coming into this blue growth concept, which may, for some of us, feel a little bit um, not so concrete, but I think what it does is to frame, um, frame the economy and the different sector under one umbrella. And that umbrella is the blue umbrella, which I was call it. And we heard today also the minister mentioned the renewable, the energy from the ocean, the energy from the Baltic, the potential. We have the protein, the food, and we have a conference in Riga in the 26th to the 27th of November talking about the eco-muscles and all the muscles as a protein but also as a biogas resource for, for new opportunities. We also have the pharmaceutical and the tourism industry. So looking into this new sector, there is a huge potential that we need to facilitate. But I think one point that I wanted to make also is that it's not about protecting and it's not about making huge profit. It's about how we can protect by making profit. And I think that's also how we need to involve with different stakeholders to get this balance and arguments right so we don't fall into one or the other category. So let me come into why do we actually need business? And I think governments have shown from so many aspects that we're not able to do it alone. I think we have seen many of those huge negotiations in Rio we have the World Trade Organizations that actually this week is just trying to cut down the pure essence on how to agree among over almost 200 states. Um, and there is many other examples. So the business can actually show the leadership. And once business change their mind, they can change tomorrow. We know the negotiation between the governments take a very long time. And even though we agree, then we have to implement it. And even though if we implement it, what happens if we don't implement it? So we do need to work together, that's for sure. And we also know that governments cannot create business. I think we should make that clear. We can enhance, we can stimulate, but business is not created in governments. And we need that innovative, dynamic aspects from the market. And another aspect, which I think is quite interesting, if you look at the companies today, they're much bigger, we have more companies and we have more markets. And also just outside the Baltic space, but still, if you think about Walmart, it's the same revenue as almost Sweden and Norway's GDP. And what does that say of the responsibility of companies? What does that say how they order products in the supply chain about the business relations? And I understand that if you have a person in a company that deals with waste, in a huge company, you can change the whole waste sector because you have that demand. So we need to integrate with companies. And as of course, companies cannot do it alone either. They are not accountable to anyone except for their own uh, board. 
So we need to be accountable for the constituency, the people. So linking into democracy, we need companies, but we also need governments working together. And my third point, coming back to the solutions, which may be the more of an interesting part in this. I think, yes, we do need investments. And just an example is that the Baltic Sea Action Fund was funded by Sweden and Finland. And it ended up in 24 different projects that are now, and this mentioned that I mentioned conference in Riga is actually one of them. And that could be concrete projects that also show small scale opportunities and possibilities that could later be scaled up from other different sources. So we need the leadership from the companies, but also the governments need to, need to promote good companies. We cannot put burden on the good companies. We have to facilitate that. And there is this principle, pollution pay principles, and that of course something that we should also stimulate and work practical. We also need long-term framework. We need to have long-term horizons from the government once we put those legislation and policies in place. So we're not changing the environment where the dynamic forces should come up with the solutions. We also need education, we need awareness raising, and we need disseminations. And we have the media, and we have the NGOs. They play a crucial role in this, particularly if we're looking into the democracy. A democracy is based upon having a discussion in society where we have different views, and that needs to be reflected. We also have the local, regional, national, and international level. All those have to work together. It's just not one na nation, once again, cannot create it. We need to work cross-border, but also from other sectors. Just another thing is so the mar maritime spatial planning. It has not been mentioned yet, but it is important in terms of, it's not a governance function. It's how we can create all this, how we can meet all this demand in the ocean. Tourism, security, defense, wind power, fisheries, all those have to come together, and we have to join forces and see what should we use the ocean, what should we use the Baltic for? And that's why it's important to have a overall uh, maritime spatial planning. And lastly, I would end with the word leadership and coalitions of the willing, because that's, I think, it's really crucial, both from the business side, from the government, from the NGO, from the media, but also, of course, from the scientists. Thank you.